The Tokyo Electric Power Company, TEPCO, granted the NewsHour permission for a rare tour inside the plant, where three nuclear reactors melted down after the Great Tohoku earthquake and subsequent tsunami on March 11, 2011. <laughs> In the seismically isolated and radioactively protected emergency response center, we met the man in the hottest seat of all here, Superintendent Akira Ono. He runs an unprecedented decommissioning project that will not be done for decades. He prefers not to call it a cleanup. To see it firsthand, we had to suit up. We must also wear a full face mask and respirator for good measure. Resembling astronauts on the way to a fully fueled rocket, we donned special shoes and hard hats, then boarded a bus that would get us as close to the meltdowns as the laws of physics and common sense would allow us. Fukushima Daiichi, or number one, was a complex of six boiling water reactors designed by General Electric. They were built on sloping terrain, sandwiched between a mountain ridge and the Pacific Ocean. The nuclear cores are between 600 and 800 feet from the harbor. Three of those cores are now melted down, still steaming hot. Their steel containment structures breached. Engineers believe some of the nuclear fuel has melted right through the steel containment vessels onto a concrete basement floor where it is exposed to groundwater. As the groundwater passes through the plant, it gets mixed in with the contaminated water that is used to cool the melted down cores. The result is an awful lot of water that needs to be captured or else it ends up in the ocean. Regardless, no one disputes the plant is steadily leaking radiation-tainted water into the sea. The long-term solution here is to remove and secure the nuclear fuel. At Unit 4, they have begun that process. This reactor was shut down for maintenance when the tsunami hit and so the fuel had been moved into this storage pool. Even though the reactor was not running, during the worst of the crisis, hydrogen gas accumulated in the reactor buildings, causing a series of explosions. Debris rained down into the pool, landing on top of the stored fuel assemblies. Workers have now carefully plucked away the pieces and have begun removing the 1,533 fuel assemblies stored here. It's assumed that some debris fell through the gaps, engineer Takashi Hara told me. So far we don't think it's anything that will cause the fuel to get stuck. However, it could be the case in the future, so we're proceeding very slowly. The fuel assemblies are transported in casks that will be stored in a more seismically secure, common storage pool. If all goes as planned, this process will be complete by the end of this year. But removing the melted fuel from units 1, 2, and 3 is another matter entirely. The radiation levels are simply too high for humans to ever get close enough to clean up. Even so, TEPCO is vowing to have the fuel debris removed from one of the reactors by mid-2020. But how? The only way to do that is to invent robots that can do the job. And that is precisely what they're trying to do. They are probably the most robotic society, uh, you know, there is on Earth. Uh, now you have to take it to another level, uh, you know, to work in the high radiation fields and to do things that they've never done before. There are many things that will have to be done here that have never been done before in order to decommission this plant. You see, this accident is not yet over. And, um, and the tanks of water that I'm mentioning is only one of the problems. There's other problems as well. In addition to the fuel that melted down into the ground, that's very, very, it's so radioactive that no worker can even look at it. They can't even, they can't even bend over and look at it because they would get a deadly dose of radiation. Uh, they're, they're, they're sort of like invisible x-rays, but they're so powerful that they would actually kill you. And uh, even when they send robots into these areas where the core has melted down, if they send robots into these areas, you know, uh, to take pictures or whatever, it turns out that the robots only last for about five minutes and then they just, they can't work anymore. It's sort of like the Tin Man and the Wizard of Oz. Uh, they, ca they can no longer move because their electronic components have been damaged by the radiation and, and they will no longer work. So even the robots can't really take this radioactive environment for very long. 
So when you asked me the question originally, which is worse, the atomic bombs or the Fukushima meltdown, <laughs> it's a very good question because they're both bad in different ways. The, the atomic bomb is, is mostly bad because it destroys so much. It, it, literally, it literally levels the buildings. It, makes, it just takes the whole city, and it's just as if you kind of, if it was all made of sand and you just rubbed a, a um, if you took a steam shovel and just sort of rode over it, you know, and just crushed everything and flattened everything. So the bomb has that destructive ability. Now, the Fukushima disaster does not destroy things in that way, but what it does is it causes this enormous problem of radioactive contamination. And that stuff is, in fact, getting into the environment. Every day, 